Hello there everyone and welcome to the start of a new campaign in Kaiser Redux. Mod I've not played in a long time at the time of this recording. We're playing as the French national state because someone asked me to, to play in Kaiser Redux as this nation. And they say they want me to go down the Action Francais route, so I apologize ahead of time. We might have done this before on the channel, but it's been so long since I've played a relatively normal game of Hoi 4. Because I've played at the time of this recording tons of Old World Blues. Um, but yeah. Um, I'm, a, I'm very rusty on <laughs> normal Hoi 4 stuff, but I do want to read all this stuff because it's been a while since I've read stuff, um, at least regarding Kaiser Redux. So, I'm led by Philip Patan, he is the line of Verdun, and, oh, now we have Maurice Duchanin. Okay, so Verdun now breaks with Croix de Fieu. Francois de la Rocque's Catholic corporatist Croix de Fieu, a major ally of the Junta and the Assembly today, suffered a significant setback. The party has long been a broad ten coalition. United mainly by Delarque's own charisma and a shared distrust for liberal democracy, however, the tensions caused by this have clearly researched or reached a boiling point, with some of the parties, hardliners under Joseph Darnam, splitting off entirely to form a new Chevalier du Glaive party. Um Claiming inspiration from the legionaries in Romania. And seeking to defend French racial purity and restore French power in Europe, Darnan is notably proclaimed his absolute loyalty to the Pitan government in what we can only assume is a ploy for influence in the Junta. Nevertheless, Darnan's group remains on the extreme fringe, and his radicalism is regarded with suspicion by much of the population, while Pétain's allies in the Junta have no interest in working with him. If anything, his split from the Croix de Fieu has harmed de la Rocque through exposing the divisions in his own party more than his help Darnan. We can safely ignore the lunatic and death of a friend. As Majesty uh, George V, by the grace of God, of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, and of the British Dominions beyond the seas, King and Defender of the Faith, Emperor of India, Friend of France, and a great ally during the Great War since their exile, also the personal friend of Marshal Pétain, since the two met on the battlefields two decades ago, has died today at seven years old. Though the situation is unfortunately tense at home, given the magnitude of the event, it is important for the Entente that the line attend the funeral of George V and the coronation of his son Edward, and more personally for Petain, it is important to mourn a friend and ally, who, like him, oversaw the exile of his people after bloody revolutions in their homelands, and like him, was so heartily dedicated to one day come back and retake what is rightfully theirs. And so Marshal Petain embarked on a special transatlantic flight, ready to honor the memory of a friend but celebrate a new era of Anglo-French friendship. Anglo -French friendship. The king is dead, along with the king and uh, Louis Franchet. Despelli retires. I apologize for all my mispronunciations. I am not remotely French, as far as I know. Poignant, poignant news has struck the nation today as Marcel, uh, Marshal Louis Franchet Despre, hero of the Great War and Pétain's long standing chief of staff, has gone into retirement. Despre is an old man now and clearly feels unable to lead men in war as successfully as he did 20 years ago, and so few can blame him for stepping back. Nevertheless, Pétain's government has lost a vital political ally and a popular figure capable of rounding up support for the junta. Furthermore, without the unifying figure of Despre, debates, debates in the military are likely to come to the surface as Pétain will be forced to choose the new chief of staff. Farewell to a true patriot. Industrial as a colony sounds pretty good to me. Our current industry could never hope to sustain a military campaign across the metropole. If we're to have any hope of liberating our brothers and sisters, we must rectify this dire situation and seek to encourage a far greater level of industrial growth across the colonies. Subsidies for new construction projects in both the Maghreb and sub-Saharan territories will also begin to get our industry capacity or industrial capacity back on track. Their land plan. Um, I'm not sure. Like I said, I'm pretty rusty on Hoi 4 at this point. I played so much World War Blues, it's not funny. Um, hmm. Begin an idea affecting resistance mechanics and non core map are depending on our choices during the focus. Interesting. Expanding of autonomy. Uh, colonial status quo. A renewed crackdown. We'll probably go with that one. Yeah. French Union. Uh, we have to own Paris, basically. Corners on Algeria. A research French rule. New French African colony to better governor holding, so. Uh, but yeah, that's where we're going right now, and we're doing prepare for the liberation. The situation in the continental Europe is quickly becoming more and more tense with elections imminent among the communist traitors, whose relations with the Germans are now more tense than ever. There's no point in denying that a conflict even worse than the horrors of the Great War is around the corner, and the conflict will be the only chance we ever get to liberate the metropole from syndicalist tyranny. As such, we must review our military capabilities and seek to resolve debates within the army. Truly, Entente, that's pretty good. Uh, naval dockyards are alright. We could use that. We could use that research slot and a military factory, so we're gonna rush on the right side. Uh, yeah, that's not bad. The line in Canada. After a 60 hour, 60 hour transatlantic flight, Marshal Patan arrives in Ottawa, greeted by Canadian Prime Minister and a large crowd of Canadians, mostly Quebecois, Quebecois, people from Quebec, who see the state visit as a renewal of Anglo French cooperation. Then they drove to Windsor, where the late em King Emperor George had asked to be buried. After a grandiose and emotional ceremony where Pétain was finally able to say farewell to a personal friend and ally, he took a tour of Ontario and Quebec, greeted all along the way as a friend of the Empire, before meeting with King Edward VIII. 
In a pre-planned move, the two men shook hands in front of the media of the world, and the new king declared that no matter the struggle the future holds, the French and British nations would always fight side by side in this great crusade against a cynicalist threat. Later on, the two men held a private talk, discussing current issues facing the Entente, the policies that both men were planning on the undertaking, as well as the inevitable prospect of war. The mutual undying commitment of both nations to each other was of course renewed, announcing even stronger bonds within the Entente. The town returned home. Let me do a cup of decaf coffee here, because I'd like to get to sleep tonight, maybe. Um, so it's been a while since we played Kaiser Redux, too, so we're out of guns, we're, we, we try to go to local autonomy for now, uh, but we'll see how long that lasts, of course. Uh-huh. A su successor to de Despre. Over a week has now been passed since Louis Franchet Despre retired, and Fatana is still held back on announcing his successor. This is because of the Despre's retirement has robbed the military of a unifying and respected figure, capable of papering over the do growing doctrinal divide, as a younger generation of officers seek to find solutions to the military's decline. On the one side, General Charles de Gaulle and his allies are known for their conviction that the nation can, in its current circumstances, only sustain a relatively small army, and this should focus on professionalism and high quality of training and equipment. Furthermore, de Gaulle is passionate in his belief that the tanks are the future of warfare, and the army should develop elite armored units which can achieve concentrated or rapid breakthroughs. Opposing de Gaulle's faction is a group of officers centered around Admiral Francois Darlan and General Maxime Wagen, who follow a more traditional approach that is often more popular among the older generation of officers. Drawing on the traditional French idea of citizen soldier and the need for a strong naval and air power in order to achieve land in order to land in the metropole, uh, they argue for as large an army as circumstances allow, alongside a greatly strengthened navy and air force, with the three forces acting together in greater coordination. Um, by now, however, the pressure from both factions of the military, from civilian populations or politicians, eager to see the military reform one way or another, and from public opinion, has grown too strong for Patan to procrastinate any longer, and he must appoint a successor. So we want or a small force of what we need to bring bring to Gaul. Darlan and Wagen will preserve our military traditions. Well, if we're going this way, which, you know, thank God Kazaridux has uh, these paths and whatnot. I'm sure I'll play National France again someday. Did you get Darlan and a legion? Uh, well, Action Francois. Oh, and the kingdom. After he resigns, me with either Marin or De La Roque, refuse their demands, and blah, 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 blah. We're under Maras. So, national populists. Yeah, this is national populism, so the proletarian guard. I feel like you get more manpower and political power. Praetorian guard. Wide, remove widespread riots, that's good. Voice of the militia. Underworld connections. I just want to see what we're going to we need here. Ultra national Catholicism. Everyone's going to be Catholic. Legionary idealism. French purity. Dominate capitalism. Army murder. Even more political power, that's cool. Weekly more support goes up. Ideals of youth. Or ideal of youth. Internal enemy. Legionary outreach. Total sacrifice. Interesting. The Grand Master. I'm sure I've, I'm sure I've played as this guy before. Militia corporatism. They said that there's more content for this group, though. So, the beautiful war. Well. We can do whatever route we really want. Um, De Gaulle. We really don't have an industry for it, you know? Professional army. I like special force capacity multiplier, though. Get more armor. Our industry is just so small. Expand special forces. I like that. Strengthen officer autonomy. Rapid breakthroughs. I mean, we would have very few divisions to encircle enemies. Subordinate the Navy. Or the Darlan plan. You get a research slot here too. A large army. Force cooperation. Expand resistance contacts. Coordinate operations. Strengthen the Navy. Rule the skies. I like that too. Patriotic appeals. Citizen soldier ideal. Broad offensives, infantry division defense plus 25%. Wow, dominate the Mediterranean. 25% more infantry division defense. I mean, really, my goal. I and mean, we don't have a huge industry. You know, um, I I would love to go down this route, but my goal is make sure that we have enough. Um, yeah, of an air force, really. Traditional approach. Hmm, tanks are the future of warfare. 
armor advancements. I mean, really, can we produce a really good tank division? Do we even have a tank division? We barely have a tank division. Our industry is just not that good. Truth be told, I'd rather focus on... Oh, look at all this stuff. We don't even making tanks. Really, we'll probably go this way. Preserve our military traditions. It's kind of like we have to, you know? Here, I'll put on resistance. Uh, Ministry of Naval Affairs, Ministry of the Air. The Ministry of the Air is tasked with both organizing our aeronautical efforts, such as civilian air transport, and our air force, or air forces, which proved so useful in the Great War, which, according to our military thinkers, will prove even more critical in the coming war, as technological progress enables new air tactics and strategy. Rumors of Mordecai's imminent demise. Jean-Jules Henri, Henri Mordecai has long served the armed forces of France, but... <clears throat> As the political stage of an exiled regime begins to change, its main players are the winds of change blow across the civilian home. More accused began to fear for his own life. Rumors have spread that his enemies within the radical right, former within France's left, or that even Algerian natives seek to gut this wounded old man lest he interfere with the coming shift, and so Mordecai has come to look for options. <coughs> Generals Jacques Massou and Armand Hugh, both old allies and confidants of Mordecai, now work within the Belgian-German Con Congo Free State and can provide a safe haven for him should he flee. However, the dark, our, our dark continent is shot with danger and filled with density and disease, especially to outsider colonists who know little of how to live in such a foreign land, and some believe that the German colonial system in Africa is moving towards collapse. Luckily, Mordecai has some experience surviving in Africa due to his time serving in Algeria both during the 1880s and again during the rise of the commune in Paris. But the sand dunes of Algeria are a far different beast to tame than the dangerous jungles Edens of the Congo. However, it's not certain that he's in any real danger. Or it could just be the paranoia of old age sitting in, and the rumors could be entirely false, but the truth is uncertain. What should the aging general do in these trying times? Uh, do we have him here? Maurice. Darlan. Darlan. Take his leave. So, we get these guys after he flees. Oh, and the dead of night, General Henri Mordecai seemed to flood the nation, leaving behind most of his personal belongings and only taking his wife, Jean Laurent, and their family with him. He's vanished in thin air, seemingly over rumors and reports of various groups such as the local Algerians, remaining socialist agents, or his former allies in the French far right, all want him dead. When old man finally out of our hair, La Cagoule has moved to cover up his strange disappearance, blaming it all to anyone that asks that Mordecai was indeed murdered, moreover, by Algerian nationalists. Which will increase the popularity of the xenophobic ideals among the population, with the planned murder of a local externally aiding with the narrative. Let us hope that he remains wise and never returns. Cover up escape at all costs. Good. Industrialize the colonies. I'm better than Kabash. A better truth. Having taken stock of our military and industrial capacity, we can no longer hide from the simple harsh fact. As it stands, our economy and army are nowhere near what is required to successfully land the metropole and then defeat the commune. Urgent and drastic reforms are urgently needed, A public pressure on the Premier Jeannin is reaching a fever pitch. Petain himself is said to be deeply angered by their findings, demanding that Jeannin do something, and possibly growing more sympathetic to the voices within his government that want to see a further consolidation of the Junta. We wait Jeannin's move. Crap. A murder on Caspa. Shocking news has reached the nation today. Last night, the retired General Henri Mordecai was found dead in the Caspa, having been stabbed repeatedly and left to bleed out in the gutter. Mordecai has a glittering, glittering career in the Great War, successfully holding the town of Arras against the Germans in 1914 and becoming deeply influential in the Clemenceau government. <clears throat> However, he became far too indebted to the Tiger for his own good, and with the fall of the Clemenceau, the Clemenceau government amidst the revolution and Fox coup, his political career collapsed. His military career soon followed, with the general staff increasingly wary of his unorthodox series, nonetheless. By the time of his death, he had become a prolific writer, and his fierce defense of Clemenceau had made, <coughs> made him a prominent figure among liberals. Already the right-wing press, notably the Croix de Fou, a line paper at Le Flambeau, and of course the Action Francaise, are pointing the finger at natives, Jews, socialists, and everything in between. Notably, this cause being taken up by Joseph Darnan. This is the first major scandal to have broken out since he split from the Croix de Fou, and clearly wants to make a success of it, calling in harsh and clear terms for crackdown on Algerian nationalists. Many of the Patan government, even if they lack the same hysteria, are also now calling for an investigation to focus on Arab organizations in the Caspa and possible socialist infiltration, simply arguing persuasively that these groups are likely beyond the old general's death. However, some are arguing that we can't point the finger at any specific group yet, and a much broader investigation is needed. Jeanne's cabinet has so far been unable to reach a decision, and the premier himself seems dangerously indifferent, as such as the matter has fallen and reached Patan himself, who must now come to decision. 
It's the Arabs. It's all right. Um, I, I, I'll be honest. I really don't remember. Uh, is it Spirit of Firepower still the way to go? Get better recovery rate. All frontline battalions get more soft attack, which is nice. It's not bad. Well, I guess we'll go Spirit of Firepower. I don't know. It's only cost 10. It's not bad. It's pretty good. <coughs> we need some more political power, though. Anti Communard, after defeating the Valkyrie in 1919, the Communards rose up again and abolished her cherished republic. Luckily, some of the most important figures of the republic have immigrated to Algeria, where they plan to organize a counter revolution. Now that the syndicalist traitors have taken full control of the mainland, we must crush them. We must ensure that our eternal France will always be free. And Janin's plan. Uh, Petain's premier, Maurice Janin, has a few redeeming features. He is uncharismatic, unmotivated, and incompetent, and prone to political blunders. He is, however, loyal, and with loyalty that has inspired him to come to the Marshal today with an undesirable, if necessary, proposal. In order to ensure that he's a political capital to push through the military spending that is needed to get the army to a fifth state for liberation, Yanin intends to pay off a large number of deputies in the assembly. Although he knows that such corrupt measures are far from ideal, and could cause significant problem problems of leak, Yanin is certain that it is the only way forward, in light of growing frustration with his government inabilities. Reluctantly, Patan can only agree. Let's hope this, begin, this can be kept quiet. The culprits, after weeks of investigation, uh, loyalty aided by numerous white citizens who were present in the cast by the time have been clear beyond much doubt that the Algerian nationals were at fault for Mordecai's murder. Although a specific murder has not yet been found, and those we have rounded up have proven notably resilient under interrogation, it is quite clear that all involved the cells of the Socialist and Algerian Nationals ENA and associated groups were responsible. As such, our government has resolved to order a new crackdown on nationalism and native groups across Algeria and the West African colonies, lest this happen again. Meanwhile, Joseph Danam, whose own nephew aided the police during the investigation, has emerged from his first major political test stronger than ever. I want all these Arabs to be on bars before sunset. And of course we don't feel but whatever. Well, let's see. Industrialize. We must. Code ignit. And then the scandal breaks. In uh, news, that surprised few in the know. Yannin's corruption has been exposed in all its sordid detail, elaborate bribes, disturbing threats, even promises to turn a blind out of blatantly illegal activity in exchange for support, all have been common practice of the Yannin government, and all have intensified recently as Yannin makes a belated effort to strengthen his hand. Everyone from the staunch liberal Camille Champtemps to Charles Maurras and Joseph Darnan have harshly rebuked not only Yannin, but Patan himself. And although Yannin's own fall from power is now a certainty, some even speculate that the junta itself is on the way out. Ah, oh, merda. Oh, it's not good. The White Feathers. Critical to the stability of the regime, the Society of the Missionaries of Africa is a Catholic society of apostolic, apostolic, <laughs> apostolic life, focusing on evangelism and education in Africa. Founded in 19, or 1868 in Algiers, it quickly became an integral part of this colonial society, adapting to the native customs, adopting the native dress, all while accomplishing a tremendous amount of ethnographical and geographic research. They've been on the forefront of French initiatives on the continent, despite their sometimes strained relationship with the increasingly anti-clerical Republican government. They've become staunch advocates for the native populations, even accepting native priests, never hesitating to side with them against the colonial authorities when needed, and generally acting as a bridge between the two, earning them the affectionate nickname of White Fathers. In the troubled times since the revolution, they have become downright crucial to maintaining French authority over what is left of the empire, working tirelessly to maintain the peace between colonies or colonists, exiles, and natives with the full support of the Marshal's conservative government. Our Lady of Africa, pray for us and the Muslims. We're screwed. Who needed political power? Jeannin's resignation, of course. Today, the inevitable came to pass, and after two days spent locked away in his office, Maurice Jeannin gave a short, regretful speech to the jeering assembly, announcing his immediate resignation. It's clear that Patan has himself had himself had him forced out, threatening that if he didn't go quietly, he would not only lose his rank in the army, but his liberty as well. And thus fell the Jeannin regime, ineffectual and shambolic to the end. Patan's next move as he attempts to stabilize the situation is now un un unknown. But members of the Croix de Fieu, FR, and even AF have been all been seen meeting with the representatives of the Junta. What lies next? Oil crud. Our next move ever since Jeannin resigned, the Republic has been without any Prime Minister, and the Junta has been in chaos. With the time for us to take on the daily administrative responsibilities that he has grown used to delegating. Meanwhile, protests supported by everyone from liberals to legionaries are continuing in the streets, and we're running out of time to stabilize the situation. Uh, as such, the two possibilities lie before Petan. First, as suggested by many, he could seek to gain the support of the civilian populations through more legitimate means than Jeannin had used. This would entail entering into discussions with either Francois de la Roque, leader of the Croix de Fieu, and darling of the far right, or Louis Marie, leader of the center right Federation Republicaine. Neither man would be able to use his political prestige and support base to restore confidence in the regime, but would also demand extensive concessions in exchange for doing so, something which has inspired some Petain loyalists to urge the Marshal not to bother talking to any politicians. Civilian politics, they argue, is responsible for dragging France into the chaos it currently faces, and it is time for Petain to fearlessly kill the Junta's position, and bend the assembly to his will. 
Lord Marshall must use the course of action, but he has little time. Our engine needs De La Roque. We need national spacking. So, meet with either either one. Maintain the basis of the Republic. Reach at the modern. Stability or stability? Paternal autocracy. Uh. And then refuse their demands. Now reach out to the far right. Eid al-Adha. Today, Muslims all over the world celebrate Eid al-Adha, Feast of the Sacrifice, commemorating the willingness of the Prophet uh, Ibrahim to sacrifice his son Ishmael as an act of obedience to God's command. Uh, before, the killing the, before the killing blow, however, God sent an archangel to Gibral to substitute the son with a lamb to sacrifice instead. In remembrance of this intervention, each family ritually slaughters an animal and shares it in three. One third going to the poor, one third to relatives, and one third is kept and eaten. The faithful teen faithful then go to their local mosque, and the conclusion of the Eid prayers and sermons, they exchange greetings, gifts, and visit one another. Consider the holiest days of the holy. While the Muslim faith is always accompanied by large festivities and is sometimes even the occasion to lower confessional barriers, as some Muslims invite their non-Muslim neighbors and friends to partake in this uniquely Islamic celebration, Eid Muk Mubarak. Mubarak. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm meeting with the colonel. That's faithfully arranged by Petain supporters. The line of Verdun, the respected commander of the Great War, has met with oh, Francois de la Roque, a heroic common soldier from the same conflict. De la Roque became an active in the veterans' groups, joining the right-wing Croix de Fou in 1927 and taking it over in two years later, the same year that Petain succeeded the late Foch as president. Since then, De La Roque has greatly expanded his organization from a vaguely nationalistic group for disgruntled old soldiers to a formidable political movement, advocating for corporatist economics, French nationalism, and a strong presidency. Perhaps, predictably, the Croix de Fou has so far been glad to support the Junta. Gaining the votes of many Pétain sympathizers among the public has been vital maintaining parliamentary support for the Junta. However, although De La Roque now promises to continue to stand by Pétain no matter what, he did today suggested to the Marshal that appointing a new cabinet dominated by members of the Croix de Fou with themselves as Premier will go a long way to resolving the crisis. He is indeed correct. With open backing from De La Roque's newspaper, Le Flambeau, his paramilitary disposal, and from his extensive support base, the Junta will surely be able to move on from the crisis. However, some allies are cautioning Pétain that granting De La Roque such influence may well lead to the end of the Junta, with De La Roque slowly displacing the Marshal. We have to accept? Yeah, he's... They all stay low anyway. We don't need to give them so much power. Hmm. This doesn't help that much, but... The chaos of the revolution in exile left us with a precious few allies. Compared to the vast coalition that had challenged Germany during the Great War, however, we must consolidate our ties with those allies that we do have and reach out to our fellow Entente nations for increased economic cooperation with mutually beneficial trade deals and investment alongside a fresh effort to attract investment for these countries. Or we can do this one first and then get another military research slot faster. One, two, three, or one, two. The Darlan plan. Philip Pétain has accepted Francois uh, Darlan's proposals for military reform, with Darlan having been appointed as the new chief of staff. The French military will now set about implementing Darlan's reform plan, centered around the idea as if a large as army's circumstances allow, with an integrated command structure that allows for greater cooperation between forces. And the military research. Our current R&D capabilities are severely lacking, and we need to greatly expand funding for research facilities in order uh, to develop the military technology required for a modern army. We can put our resolve in this issue for no longer, and for it's time to greatly increase funding for military research. Time's running out. I haven't turned down his allies' overtures, and with the protests ongoing, Pétain is in an increasingly difficult position. Although both De La Roque and Maran have promised they will continue to stand by the Junta, our refusal to make meaningful concessions to either men is certainly ensure that their support will barely, hardly be vigorous in the coming weeks, and with the protesters going nowhere, this won't be enough. With this in mind, multiple allies of Pétain, including both General de Gaulle and Admiral Darlan, are now once again urging the Marshal to declare martial law, arguing that civilian politics has led to this chaos, and that it's time for us to move on from it for good. If the Junta is to live on, the Metropole is to be retaken, however. Others are urging us to make discreet overtures to various far-right leagues to see if their support will bolster our image. So, refuse your demands, and reach out to the far-right leagues. Martial law. Enough, enough, martial law. And then Ross asks you to repeal the law of uh, exile. Accept it. Red Cossacks is mental. Look at that. Look at this. Moras's Gambit. Having been quite uh, con quietly contacted by the associates of the president, looking for a backing, Charles Moras, the political philosopher and dominant politician of uh, the Orient. Uh, Orleanist monarchist and integral nationalist action Francois 
Au Francais has seemingly informed a clear impression that the youth has become a desperate for support. It is with this in mind, it appears, that he and his allies in the AF today announce a new motion in the Assembly to formally lift the law of exile against royal pretenders, allowing them back into France. Although it's not an outright effort at restoring the monarchy, it's a crucial first step in doing so. And that's an extremely ambitious move on the part of Maras, especially telling was Maras's humble request, repeated in later speeches by Maurice Puyo and Henri Massis, for the support of the present battalion in his efforts. Of course, such an endorsement of Maras's move would allow the act to pass with ease and lead to, on to a restoration of the monarchy, but it would seem Maras won't take anything less in exchange for support. Give him more backing. And ignore Louis Napoleon's uh, requests. The Code of the Indignant remains in place since the creation of 1887. A diverse set of laws and regulations imposed on the native populations of the empire. They enshrine the inferior legal status despite them being technically French citizens. Collective punishment, a parallel justice system, forced labor and service in the armed forces. Um, enforced by native elites under the guise of modernization, spread, a, spread of civilization. To say that the Indignant has created resentment would be an understatement. However, it is. It has proven to be a sure source of source of labor for the colonial effort and is supported by many prominent voices in the government who argue that maintaining the status quo is necessary to prepare for the reconquest. The unlikely alliance with the law of exile being repealed with Patan's backing, Jean de Laurent, de Orleans, the Duc de Guise, and Orleanus claiming to the throne has arrived amidst royalist royal celebration in Algiers. It was also greeted by General de Gaulle, a clear sign of the junta's growing willingness to back monarchism. Also as a reminder uh, of de Gaulle's own royalist instincts. Oops. Many now predict the restoration of the Orleans monarchy within the near future, claims that the Jute has been hesitant to deny. Meanwhile, the newspaper and supporters of the Action Francais have taken a firmly pro Junta stance recently, rallying Grand Pétain as a presumed savior to their hopes of a restoration, encouraged in this by Maras and Pujol. Confronted in the streets by the AF's paramilitary Camelot's new role, the protests have also begun to fade away. A new mood of optimism is set in around the presidential palace, and Pétain is glad that the tide has finally turned in his favor. All is planned. See, things are working out for us, right? Things are absolutely working out for us. All I have to do next, ignore Louis Napoleon's demands. <coughs> Expanding the works. Until today, all has been going well and smoothly in the collaboration with Maras and the AF. Most have gone on to believe that the Junta will live on, even if the monarchy will return. However, things have become notably more complicated today. With the repeal of the law of exile having allowed every royal claimant to return, Louis Bonaparte, claimant to the throne of the French Empire, arrived in Tunis today. This has considerably disrupted our plans for a smooth consolidation of power with the roots of a resurgent Bonapartism now beginning to grow. Having to choose between two royal houses is less than desirable. Many Patons allies, including de Gaulle, simply argue that we should ignore the Bonaparte. The Empire fell in 1870, and has no organization for political movement equal, equivalent to the Action Francaise that can fight for its own restoration. However, others, including Francois Darlan are arguing that this is a good opportunity to not let Maras' influence grow too out of hand, and we should tactically support the more easily controlled Bonaparte. Oh, whoops. Similar discontent, years of inaction and political stagnation have caused many elements within the army, and the population become dissatisfied with the current regime, something hardly helped by Maurice Jeannin's repeated blunders. This is extensively uh, played in the hands of both resurgent liberal parties in the far-right leagues, although it is suppressed. Concession. Contestation is surely but slowly growing within the French Republic and Pétain's speech. Look at that. Today in Algiers, President Pétain, flanked by military loyalists and action Francais politicians alike, gave an extensive and charismatic speech detailing the failures of the Republic, blamed the inherent weakness in fighting of parliamentary rule for the defeat in both the Great War and Revolution, and the short term of the corruption that brought down Mar Marin. Pétain declared that only a return to monarchical rule under the House of Orléans could save France and that preparations would be made for restoration. The old marshal also proceeded to announce a new cabinet dominated by prominent members of the AF. With monarchists celebrating the streets, both Maras and the Duc de Guy have declared their happiness at the turn of events. It's clear that the future of France is a future under its king. Viva le Roy de Domaine. Jacques Bainesville. It was born in 1879. Renowned historian, journalist, and one of the founders of the Action Francaise gave uh, today a grand speech at an AF meeting in Algiers. Born in a staunchly Republican family, turned to monarchism not out of nostalgia, but out of reflection and comparison, considering the Republic to be unstable, fickle, and fundamentally incapable to compete with a stable and united Germany. A prolific writer, he ceaselessly exalted the French monarchy in the historical works and contributed to many newspapers, simultaneously literary critic and financial analysis, or analyst. Fleeing to Algeria as a revolution broke out, he wrote in the chaotic aftermath a short book that quickly became immensely popular, titled The Political Consequences of Peace, 
Bainville exposes his thoughts on the peace treaty between the CGT and the Germans, saying that, just like the Republic is a daughter of Bismarck, engineered to weaken France, the Commune is a daughter of Villain II, created enough to rot France down to her very roots so that she might eventually be turned into little more than a vassal state in an inevitab inevitable coming war. This thesis has become one of the pillars of the rhetoric of the AF, who tirelessly advocates for the fall of one daughter of the Boch so that France might be able to take on the other. Many in our nation are sensible to this kind of talk as anti-German sentiment has clearly not subsided at one bit among exiles, and Bainesville speech was listened to by thousands of action of Algerian members, or Algerine members, with political companions, fellow writers, and academic academicians, and even members of the government attending this grand event. The line of Verdun himself put out a statement honoring the speech and works of the historian now seen as a prophet by many. Un grand homme. La France bouge. At long last, after all the decadence, chaos, and bickering of the hated Republic, Philippe Pétain has reached out to Charles Maurras and the Action Francais, and, in exchange for the support, has committed to finally restoring the legitimate rulers of France, House Orleans, to the throne. With the preparations for restoration well underway, the whole nation can rejoice, for true and ancient governance is about to return. La Restoration. With AF's position and the government secure, we can make good on their promise to restore the Duc de Gaille, Eugène d'Orléans, to the French throne, with its influence rapidly giving way to the AF on whom? He has become reliant for continued support. Pétain shall have to oversee the transition from a republic to monarchy, and as his junta weathers away, a most peculiar training incident. As the armed forces continue to prepare tirelessly for the coming liberation, there has been a massive increase in the training-related incidents. Well, look at this guy. Look at Philip. Well, such a thing is to be expected, and most at worst. Most end at worst with a broken rifle or a broken limb or two. A few of those have resulted in a few deaths, but those are fair and far between. Of all the various incidents that take place over the past few weeks, there's one that simply takes a cake. What started as a simple target practice, the mighty Democrati's main gunner miscalculated a shot and ended by shelling a small village. Immediately upon realizing their mistake, the crew disembarked and went to survey the damage for the incident reports. Most of the crew expected to find a massacre or a bloodbath, but this was not the case. Due to nothing short of a divine intervention, not a single soul was lost, and most of the shots fired actually hit meters away far outside of the small village, with one exception. In the heart of the village's market, there was a single impact site. Within the impact site was what appeared to be the charred remains of a bear and a rooster who appeared to be fighting over a book. When questioned about those most strangest scenes, the villagers could offer very little. Claiming that the bear and rooster had turned up out of nowhere in a few weeks prior, the villagers said the animals never interacted with the people, saying to themselves, Occasionally the two would get into a minor scuffle. As for the book the two were fighting over, while most of it was turned to ash, what remained seemed to be a history of France until just after the exile. While these two animals were fighting over a book, or history book would never be known, as for the democracy itself, its guns and gunners shall be recalibrated and retrained to prevent any more such accidents in the future. Bears and roosters fighting? What is this world coming to? Oh boy. And we're still in the Antana. Military research is always good. That's yeah, secured independence, huh? Pesiera. Very nice, very nice. The Dalan plan. French na National French military has adapted the proposal, proposed reforms of Fr Admiral Franco Francois Dalan, calling for greatly increased troop numbers over military professionalism and increased coordination between Army, Navy, and Air Force. Oh, UBD's gone. Goodbye, UBD. Are these guys killing each other? Yeah, they are. Oh, they just... Now they're not. Good job, Raj Authority. Ah. Oh. Well, things are going on. Nice. And we have a fourth research slot. Thank goodness. I really want to make sure that our planes are good, though. So... High agility. More agility, less range. Nice. And what else we got here? anti parlamenta Emphasize Maurizima. Get more, some, more, some more political power, I like that. But anyway, I have government in place. Charles Moras can allow seek to implement his integral nationalist ideals. Rooted in the rational need for order and hierarchy to guide society, Morassian ideology is the only tangible solution to France's countless problems. By seizing the initiative and forcing through sweeping legislation and promoting his political literature, Moras can now show the whole nation the light of his ideology. The End of the Republic Over the past few weeks, the Junta has been greatly stabilized, buoyed by the backing of the Action Francais, both in its newspaper and on the streets. This has come out with a dear price, and it seems that the Royalists have finally gotten their way. As such, Philippe Pétain announced today, flanked by prominent members of the AF, that the Third Republic, having been proven by the defeat in the Great War, the Revolution, and now the fall of Jeanne to be unworkable, was no more. In its place to seek true unity and revive the genuine spirit of France, the Orléans movement, or Orleans, uh, would be restored under Jean Duc de Gaille. Although most commentators saw this coming when the Junta and the AF began collaborating, it nevertheless came as a great shock to the nation, and most Frenchmen barely know what to make of such a seismic political shift. Nevertheless, the dominant mood appears to re be relief that the crisis is over, and hope that the monarchy will lead to political stabilization and deeper unity needed to free the metropole. 
a new dawn for the nation. The French national state will be known as the Regency Government of the Kingdom of France. And Fete de la Federation. On this day, the 14th of July, we celebrate a national day. Military parades, uh, uh, as well as popular street celebrations and fireworks are planned all across France in a joyous celebration of the greatness of our nation. For long, what is even celebrated on this day has been a topic of heated debate between left and right. The left would insist that this day is celebrating the 1789 storming of the Bastille Fortress, a Parisian royal prison and armory, widely considered as a starting point of the French Revolution, while the right would on the contrary consider this as a day commemorating the Fête, uh, Fête de la Fédération, a massive holiday festival that took place across France a year later to celebrate the unity of the French nation and an end to the political struggle of the revolution itself. History proved that hope wrong, but this hasn't stopped the debate from arising every year. The 1880 law, instituting the National Day on the 14th of July, simply abstains from taking its side, but thankfully, we have since put the controversy to rest as an amendment voted by the Assembly some years ago has clarified that we are indeed commemorating the Festival of the Federation today. Either way, let's enjoy ourselves. Action Algerian. Found in the 20s by Farhat Abbas in the chaos of the exile, calling itself the principal media outlet of integral nationalism along to the main Action Francais. Action Algerian has become one of the most popular newspapers within the Algerian departments. Its slogan, From Colony to Province, summarizes its fight alongside integralist principles, assimilation within the greater France, while still retaining privileges, traditions and local laws against the centralization and disregard for indigenous customs of the Republic, demanding native autonomy and social and economic regulation, universal suffrage and municipal elections, and for native notables to constitute an assembly advising the French government, Abbas has quickly found residents among natives, particularly the assimilated elites and the influential indigenous chiefs eager to defend their way of life against an ever-encroaching Republican government. Well, there goes the Republican government. However, the localist proposals of the action is not the only thing that has found resonance among natives. Its anti-Semitic rhetoric is also proving popular. The legacy of the Cremo Decree, a law that granted full French citizenship to the Jewish population of French Algeria, but not to the Arab and Berber Muslim population, who remain to this day essentially second-class citizens, a switch between communities that have lived together in relative peace for centuries has proven easy to exploit for the far right, as some groups and parties even promised to repeal the decree to gain support from natives, either out of genuine ideological convergence or simply out of pragmatism, as they know that nothing could be achieved without the support or at least the neutrality of the indigenous. Nationals united against the Republic? Can't be good. La, restos, la Restoration, which I read earlier. Emphasize Morisme, Morasima, Morasisme. Moracism. The coronation, today in Algiers, all the dreams of the Action Francais and of the French royalism were at least re last realized. In a long and elaborate ceremony, Jean de Laurent was crowned King of France with as many ancient rites and rituals as the circumstances of exile made possible. Notably, however, the new king did not swear as his old ancestors did to fight infidels, owing to the AF's alliance with native air groups and the need to maintain loyalty to the largely Muslim native population. After the coronation was finished, Jean met in private with both Philippe Pétain and Charles Maurras, apparently discussing the future governance of France with the monarchy back in place. Viva le Roy! How well, well did you look at that? Jean. I have definitely played as him before. Oh, well, there you go. A flag for the restoration. With the collapse of the Second Empire, we came tantalizingly close to achieving our dream. The monarchists had a majority in the National Assembly, and public fervor was high. The legitimists and Orleanists both were even to compromise on supporting a King Henry, Count of Chambord, of Henry V, the legitimist candidate. However, since he had no heir, the Orleanists would crown Philip d'Orléans, Count of Paris, after his death. There's just one problem. Count Henri refused to take the throne unless the revolutionary tricolor was discarded in favor of the old royalist Fleur de Lys. This issue was a single sticking point that ended our place in the sun. Now that we're so close once more, we'll not let the sticking point screw us again. We have a new flag, but it'll be a variation of the tricolor that people love so much. It could be the bourbon coat of arms on it, much like the flag of the July monarchy. A second option is just the same thing, but with a coat of arms more rounded since the king seemed weirdly hesitant on the pointless of the point, pointiness of the COA. A third option would be the using the tricolor of the COA, or coat of arms, but also as a compromise to anyone to be Henri's, we could put the monarchist fleur de lis in each corner. Huh. Some also suggest that we revive the flag used by Louis XVI in the closing days of his reign, its grandeur. And pompous or would do wonders in leaving the people starstruck. Finally, the last suggestion is just keep the flag as is. It works. Changing is all what kept us from power all those years ago, so why risk it? Tricolor? The design of the tricolor is good, but a more rounded coat of arms is better. I use a tricolor with four fleur de lis in the corners with a round coat of arms in the middle. Let us honor the late King Louis XVI blazing the flag during the last years of his reign. Keep the flag of the Regency. Honestly? Flag of the Regency. I don't want to use that. Um, I like what is currently here. I mean, it looks fine to me. It tells us who we are with the monarchy. 
we want to keep things simple, relatively simple, because simple is easy, it's good, it's it's good, you know? This is not bad with the fleurs, but that's hard to paint and draw. I'm thinking about the kids that maybe someday would like grow up and like, oh, I gotta paint the flag of France. And round is okay, it has its place, but I like the pointiness. Hmm. So that's where we go. Hey, look at all that political power we got now. So why are we gonna spend it? A good head of intelligence wouldn't be bad. This crackdown for more stability is pretty good too, because we could use more stability. We change out of this, we lose 0 0.05 political power, which I don't like. But you do lose 5% consumer goods, so we can actually use more consumer goods. Hmm. I might actually go with this one, maybe. I do want more stability. Disorders become rampant. We must loosen the restrictions on our police forces and give them the freedom to do their jobs and arrest the worst of the perpetrators. I do like more stability. Or we could wait and get some of this, because we really need to start working on all this stuff too. Hmm. Consumer goods, though. And you can build things even faster. You know what? I really want to build things a little bit faster. Good. Research in the Kingdom of France. Today, Marshal Patan has announced the Count of Paris, Jean will soon be crowned King Jean III of the restored Kingdom of France to the Sacred Heart Cathedral of Algiers. While his move comes seemingly out of nowhere, those who pay attention expect it. Patan has increasingly turned to the Action Francais for help. Now, it seems Maurras is cashing in on his newfound favor, big time. Jean III, nicknamed the Old King, has made a great speech to the French people in the name in which he called for unity, stability, and a return to the traditional order of things. For many, it's only a matter of time before the king appoints his new government, with Charles Maurras as its head. The complete takeover of the Action Francais is only a matter of time now. Viva le Roy! We need more guns. La Restauration. We haven't fully taken over yet, so we got to do more stuff here. Large army. Um, force cooperation. That's not bad. We can start working on getting more command power. I do want to race down here, though. Getting more military factors is very important, so on time trade deals. So if you want to read this one again, please go ahead. Boop. And we get 1% more construction speed, which is not very much, but Maghrebi shipbuilding? We have a strong well equipped navy. We have no hope of liberty in France, and as such, we badly need ships. With this in mind, the government should begin subsidizing shipping on the Mediterranean coastline of North Africa and invest further naval research. King's cabinet. Today, after some days of political wrangling presided over by the king, a new government for the resurrected kingdom was last agreed. Philip Patan's previous role as head of state has been made the redundant, made redundant by the monarchy, and has instead accepted to become Minister of War, while Charles Maurras becomes Premier in his place, and prominent cabinet roles are filled in by low AF men. In practice, the message is clear. The military junta, which has dominated French politics since 1919, is no more. Although many saw this coming, as Patan became more and more dependent on Maurras to prop up his rule, a sudden, uh, such a sudden departure from power has nonetheless astonished many. However, by 1936, most Frenchmen had become disgruntled with military rule, not incorrectly seeing the junta as more and more corrupt and stagnant. Although Maurras is far from universally liked either, he has a strong and growing support base, and most of the country only hopes that he can do a better job than his predecessors. Maurras will lead the nation on to greatness. Delightful. Inviting invitation to IEDC. A delegation from the Canadian government arrived today to formally invite the Kingdom of France to join the IEDC, the Imperial Economic Development Council. The group was created to foster greater economic cooperation with the Entente, with yearly and voluntary contributions of political power, but turned back and thus invested in other member nations at the discussion of the Kingdom of Canada. There are those in the government who expressed concern whether the Kingdom of France would actually see a return for its investment, seeing as the Kingdom of Canada could simply decide to invest everything in itself, but considering donations are voluntary, it seems that it would ensure a short life for the IEDC. Let's see what happens. IEDC advisors. Contribution allows us to take advantage of the pool of advisors. The benefit from which is greater depending on how we contributed to the group. I'll show you some of the next year. Economy, consumer goods, factory output, dockyard and repair speed, or construction. If you want to build faster? I'd rather have more consumer goods. And build even faster. I'll get more factory output too. Boop. And we've got one more. Oh, it literally increased about one day. Mal Mal, uh, this happens every time, so if you want to do this one, please go ahead. Um, the IEDC is willing to invest in the Kingdom of France, although it does not build in partic any particular French state in so much as boosts our overall industrial capacity through the Entente's economic cooperation. These factors remain as so long as our participation in the alliance persists, what direction shall we encourage an investment? Honestly, I need way more civvies and millies. I'm going to go with civvies so we can start building it up more. There you go. Explosion the Nipper. Oh, well, things are happening over there, too. Military factories, please. Oh. What is this? Infantry equipment? Donor of Bohemia, huh? So, I'm sure we can do this next, right? If we really want to, more political power would be good. 
Empower the Camelots. Uh -huh. More political power, even more political power, and more stability, which is nice. A delegation from the Far Eastern Republic of Transamir. I want to race under this one, though. The governor of the Far Eastern Republic of Transamira sent as a former foreign delegation, asking for an official recognition of her state as a legitimate Russian government. The regime of the self-proclaimed supreme ruler of Russia may seem to us ridiculous, but if we are feeling free to oppose the Russian government in Moscow, we can formalize the Far Eastern Republic of Far Eastern as a legitimate one. Mm, sorry. They pretend autocrats, but these guys are national populists, and we're on the same side right now. Ish. Leave the IEDC. Shibal Shamar. Uh... Belgian Declaration of Independence. We can't build anywhere else. Maybe except down here. Build another city down here for now. Humanisma Integral. Integral humanism. The temporal, temporal and spiritual problems of a new Christianity. The recently published work of influential Catholic philosopher Jacques Maritain has caused passionate debate among Catholics. Uh, a convert from the Protestantism once close to the once close to the action Francais, despite not being a monarchist, mostly out of suspicion towards representative democracy and opposition to the anti-clerical policies of the Third Republic, Maritain has drifted after the shock of the exile towards more moderate positions, closer to the personalist movement and Christian democracy. Rejecting both reaction and liberalism, secularism and intransigent political Catholicism, embracing humanism, arguing for human rights, the importance of family, pluralistic democracy and responsibility towards the common good, all in the spirit of the social teachings of the Church, the philosophers somewhat going against the grain. Indeed, much of the French Catholic I uh, laity and hierarchy has been radicalized by the current situation. The AF has even denounced integral humanism as a work of a traitor, a sell to democratism, a red sepulchre. However, among more progressive Catholics, Martin's work was very well received, getting praise from Father Montini, a close advisor of the Pope, and with some moderate even being drawn away from the action Francais, heeding his warning that the government and the movement is merely using the faith as a tool to further their political ideology. A new kind of integralism, huh? Or the Republican intellectuals. As a consolidated power and restore the Orléans movement to a tribal place, <clears throat> we must deal with the philosophers, writers, political theorists, and other dubious intellectuals who are prominent supporters of the Republic. Though it goes without saying, their writings and theories must be suppressed. Many in the government would also like to see the seditious figures locked up, while others argue that they can do no harm by themselves and leave them would be avoiding controversy. controversy. Fucking behind bars? Well, we'll get enough stability later on. Thirty percent. You have Mr. Infantry over here. Infantry expert. Uh, I want to wait for that. For now. Max entrenchment is not bad. Plus point three. Vision speed. Breakthrough's not bad either. I might go with the trench with a liberal victory in Canada, huh? And national rearmament program. Our need for military industry is greater than ever. And as such, it is now vital that we redouble our investments in fa arms factories and subsidies for armaments, encouraging both private business and state interests to do the bit for the military economy, introducing greater rationing in order to save the resources for the military. These guys cannot wait. Yeah, this is the most important. Also, if I didn't say it earlier, um, if you think... I, it's been a while since I played this campaign. Um, if you let me know what in the comments below, what type of template do you guys use for infantry, tanks, planes? Because it's been a while since I played, like I said earlier. Normal-ish point four, but the fate of the politicians. The Third Republic is home to an extensive and burgeoning ruling class, and now as we work to dismantle it, we must decide on its fate. Hardliners of the government rightly blame these men for the weakness and failings of the Republic and for promoting a hor horrible and horrific decadence. But some moderates believe that where the political parties is on influence no more, they can be no threat to us, and that taking more action against them would only lead, lead to condemnation. Oh, I need more political power. Look at that. Hmm. We have a lot of infantry. I like the attack. The organization also helps you out, too. Francois de la Rocky. Organization. I like the organization. 
Commando Doctrine. Huh. Elastic Defense. Uh, decisive Army Battle. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with Guns and Butter. I usually do Guns and Butter. Let's supply consumption. So we're gonna really start working on that Army XP. So after that, we can go this way. The Ulema. Uh, the Association des Olumas Muslimans Algerians, or Association of Algerian Muslim Olema, is a religious association founded in 1933. Under the official leadership of Abdelhamid ben Badis, the Association of Theologians, Teachers, and More Generally Learned Men has come to promote Islamic reform, hoping to bring Islam in Algeria to a pure original form, away from the superstitions fostered by the marabouts and the more mystical approach of the Sufi congregations. Taking inspiration from similar initiatives which found its success in the Middle East and Tunisia, many schools have already been created teaching grammar, mathematics, and religion to children, and theology, philosophy, history, as well as Islamic and French law to young adults, quickly becoming a major influence in mosques all over the region, attracting the suspicion of colonial authorities. And he, one of the city goals of the association is to foster the Islamic identity of Algeria, to unite the people beyond the divide between Berbers and coastal Arabophone Algerians, and beyond tribal boundaries. Though they stop short of advocating for independence, they strongly oppose assimilation, claiming that an Algerian nation does exist, which could not become French and does not want to become French. As such, they've already found themselves becoming an important player in the politics of the Algerian departments first. Authorities unsuccessfully sought to co-opt the association, much like the rest of Islamic clergy in the colonies, as banning the already powerful group would certainly create unrest. Then two native groups came to seek the support of the ulema. The Action Algerian of Ferhat Abbas, which claims that should be should the Fraction Action Francais come to power, an autonomous Algerian identity could be fostered and traditional and Islamic law could be fully restored, and the Etoile Nord African of Nasaldi Hajj, a syndicalist aligned underground group which advocates for the independence of Algeria, who support the economy so far. The association is not set with either, skeptical both of the sincerity of the AF's promises of autonomy and the anti clerical socialism advocated by the communards. Either way, they're probably trouble. This one's gonna be next. Also, since we changed our group here, civilian oversight. I did not want to forget that, that we got rid of local autonomy. Santa Claus and spreads of Burma. Oh, Murrah has been elected as president, huh? Interesting. Look at all the cities going. Go, 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 go. Jay with the Entente's good. And I wins the Italian elections, huh? 36 still. Let's go silos. And good. Good. We need more trucks, but really we need a lot of planes. I'm gonna go with one more here. And really planes are where we need it. Honestly, any more planes, I would prefer cast. But maybe we'll wait for that later on, I don't know. This is what we want more. Uh, anti parliamentarisme There can be no doubt is what doomed the French nation in the Valkyrie and subsequent revolution. It was a weakness in bickering over Republican politicians and the division between Frenchmen caused by multi party democracy, which led to a fall. Such a pathetic political situation can continue no longer, and the heir of Pétain's tolerance for the assembly can finally be corrected. Having a massive political capital to do so, the Moras cabinet will finally put the assembly in its place for good. Oil from Romania. Romania, like most of Europe outside of the syndicalist nations, has been significantly hit by the economic crisis caused by Black Monday. <coughs> in order to alleviate the situation, the Romanian representatives in Algiers approached to negotiate a new trade treaty. This treaty would ensure a steady supply of notch near oil for us at a reasonable price, along with the preferential tariffs between our nations. Yeah, why not? Immaculate Concepcion de Ouagadougou. The Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception of Ouagadougou was consecrated today in the presence of Jean III, governor of Haute Volta Henri Louis Joseph Chassé and Johnny Thévenot, the very influential apostolic vicar of the city of Ouagadougou, who somewhat spurs the true governor of the colony. The first cathedral to be consecrated in the Sahel, the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception takes inspiration from both traditional African building techniques and Romanesque architecture. It stands as a powerful symbol of the successes of missionary work within the French colonial empire, and especially that of the Perez Blancs. It is also the crowning personal achievement of Monsignor Thévenevo, whose presence in the city has made an unrivaled impact. Arriving in the city in 1903, he immediately reached out to the local Mosi chiefs and got to work building schools and seminary, developing the land and implementing industry, slowly but surely making the mission the academic heart of the city, if not the whole region, two years after his revival. There were already more than a thousand catechumens, 
uh, under supervision. The number of conferences has grown exponentially since. As for the rumors that he's the true governor of the colony, it is undeniable that through his personal charisma, experience, diplomatic skills, and growing economic influence, Monsignor Fenevo wields considerable influence, often acting as an intermediary between the colonial administration and traditional power structures. He has been an important and outspoken part of the administrative council of Alt Volta for more than a decade now and was a severe critic of the Algiers regime's handling of the famines of the early 30s and the revolts that followed. However, the apostolic vicars always dismiss claims that the true power in Hot Volta as lies with him, presenting himself as nothing more than a humble visionary blessed with some success caring for the flock, a living saint, that Fenebold, which I'm sure I'm saying wrong, and the classical inspiration. France is fundamentally a Latin and a Mediterranean nation, and the roots of French civilization are the Greek colonies on the southern coast of France and the Roman territories of Gaul. As such, the ideals and philosophy of the classical world must be the basis for French politics, and appreciation of the classics must be popularized in French culture. Long a proponent of classicism, or classicism, yeah, Moraes intends to further popularize these ideals. Hello. Whatever. What do we got here? That's fine. And all this is good. Extract. Because we could use a little more extraction from of aluminum, probably. Eid al Fitr. Today marks the end of Ramadan, a holy month before which Muslims are not permitted to eat or drink from the sunrise to sundown. All over the Islamic world, for one to do three days, the faithful celebrate Eid al Fitr, the feast of the breaking of the fast. With special prayers, rituals, and acts of charity, celebrations during the day, family visits, exchange for special treats and gifts, with many decorating their houses for the occasion and all organizing sumptuous meals for family and friends in the evening. Considered the most second holiest day of the Muslim faith after Eid al Adha, it is an important day for much of the indigenous population. The firing of a cannon salute to announce the end of the fast has become customary in most large cities. Colonial authorities take care to accommodate the festivities, and for much of our European population, it is an occasion to learn more about the Islamic faith and its rituals. Eid Mubarak. I do want overwhelming firepower, probably. Ooh, that's not bad. Ideological loyalty, though. 500 manpower a week. I do want that one, though. 35? We have to wait for a little longer. It's fine. Basic carriers. We literally have no air XP. Localist ideals, huh? Mother's Day. Now, ten years ago, the government instituted a heavy-handed and ageless policy, which among many other measures included the creation of a special celebration for Mother's Day, and a medal of the French family awarded to good mothers on numerous families. Though the results of these policies are only just starting to be felt, Mother's Day has caught on as a truly popular celebration. It is now widely celebrated in schools and homes across the nation to the delight of mothers everywhere. It has become customary for children to bring little gifts home for their mothers, and for husbands to make sure this is a special day for wives and of course for their own mothers. In a speech broadcast on the read of today, Jean III reminded women that only you can give to the future generations a taste of for honest work, the sense of discipline, of modesty, of respect, which makes healthy men in a strong nation. You are the source of our Christian civilization and our greatest hope for the future, ensuring that the incredibly important role of women in society is reminded to all and given the respect it deserves. Bon la fête maman. And then the air. It is tasked with organizing both our aeronautical efforts, such as civilian transport and our air forces, which proved so useful in the Great War and which, according to our military thinkers, will prove even more critical in the coming war as technological progress enables new air tactics and strategies. Boom! The dead Charles Trennan, a famous and well accomplished singer songwriter known for songs like Boom, appeared as a recruitment office in Algiers. Wearing his father's Valkyrie uniform, which he had taken with him when the family fled at the, us, at, with us to exile, he volunteered for the army. He went to a long spiel about how that calming reconquest has inflamed his patriotic feelings and he wishes for nothing more than to die for his country. The government, however, has a different view. Thrennan is a valid cultural icon already and has written hundreds of songs, as the most recent only being released a week ago. For him to die fighting in the metropole could hurt the always fragile public morale, however. To turn him away out of hand would make an enemy of a loud public voice, so the government's come up with a compromise. Despite Thrennan having zero combat experience or background, he's been enrolled into officer's training school to lead men. It keeps him out of the reasonable danger while also keeping him in the army, a delightful situation for all involved. A singing soldier who ever said, heard of such nonsense. Effects extended conscription. Re renewed crackdown. That's probably the way we should go. Colonial status quo. Expand native autonomy. Oh, actually, we should do this one then. Because. Donan, military junta, or House of Bonaparte has been restored or has power. Colonial status quo. Republican form of government has been formed. 
Dela Rocky is in power. Military Junta is held on to power. House of Bonaparte has been restored. But this, we need to be us to be in here, so. Yeah. Trans Saharan Railway. Base 2, a large army. Yeah, I mean, getting all this stuff would be nice. This would be good to do. Coordinate operations. This would be good to do, too. Patriot, a weekly war support would go up as well, which would be nice to have. Daily air support? We definitely need air, more air stuff. That defense is insane. Plus 25%? Um, do we really have to go all this way for now? Weekly stability goes up even more, but we already have some weekly stability. I'm not seeing anything here that says that, yeah, I have to get it immediately. This is pretty good. You get two civvies and two millies, which we do need. The Kingdom Reborn, that's pretty good, too. But, honestly, I think going down this route would probably be for the best, so we can at least get some air XP. And that's also why I read this one, too. Get daily air XP as well. Uh, what's down here? Return of the King. Oh. The Leroy has finally liberated France. De Gaulle's Pooch. Uh, because we really want to focus on air stuff. Hmm... Expand resistance context, this is more important. A large army. Darlan and Wagen believe strongly that only the weak can we uh, truly ensure a strong uh, enough military. That is to embrace the traditional French doctrine of expansive army, capable of governing, covering, and pushing across a broad front. As such, the General Staff has organized new recruitment campaigns across among white Frenchmen in an effort to persuade those Frenchmen who have fled to other countries to come here and to do their duties well. For its cooperation, a vital aspect of Admiral Darlan's military reforms is the increased coordination between the Army, Navy, and Air Force in strategy and planning. It does create a more integrated and cohesive military capable of defeating the communist forces. So we're going to do this one next because we do want the weekly stability to begin. So. These guys are just coastal guys. Oh, they're just military police too. 20. Eh. These guys are just plain. Well, we need some support companies at least. We need some artillery as well. So we'll get there. What do we have here? Oh, that's not bad. 10% is not terrible. Uh, Chief of the Air Force. Yeah, Battlefield Support Doctrine. It's not bad. Ground Support, Ground Attack. Hmm, I like this a lot. But Air Superiority, we need more Air Superiority because we're going to be struggling to get it. Integral National Ideology of Charles Maras, Maras in Mesma, has now been determined and implemented by the AF government. With the centralization, decentralization of the state, classicism and traditional values strongly promoted, the future of parliament. Opposition to parliamentary power and to the parliamentarian establishment, however, has always been integral to Morassa's ideology. Now that we're in power, we need a practical solution to the problem of parliament, for which Morassa has received two proposals. The orthodox view within the AF is that the assembly should be established outright, or abolished outright. Though some believe that it would be more politically expedient to reduce it to an advisory board, devoid of much more power, but useful to maintain confidence in the government. We didn't need it, but I think I'm going to end it there. We're doing well. We, we became the nation that we wanted, the Kingdom of France. And I've got a lot of way to push through, so. Oh, look at Charles Maras. Oh, Le Matre. That's not bad. Oh, and the American Civil War is going to kick off very soon. Would you look at that? So we might have some some volunteers uh, in certain states. Uh, well, we'll see. They're paternal autocrats. Uh, Syndicalists, William Haywood, Big Bill Haywood, Omar, and the Pacific Congress, so. Hey, regardless, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow, as we'll see what else we can do with the good old Entente and us being the Kingdom of France. Thanks for watching, and have a tremendous rest of your day.